Woo. What's going on? Late night, late night. Well, it's not that late, but it's getting there. About to get out. Do a couple things real quick. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why I'm nervous to become an owner operator. Stuck the land start yard. I chose not to dispatch myself today. I'm kind of relaxing. I'm trying to work these two jobs. <laughs> yeah, I just really needed this to kick back and, you know, watch a movie or something. But let's get into it. I just might be in your hood. I just might be in your For those that don't know, when you come over to Landstar, I'm assuming after you pass your um, inspection, you know, you park over here off to the cut, it gets your e-log and all that stuff installed. <clears throat> and you pretty much got it on your permit books. Um, they typically overnight them. Um, depending on what day they do it if you get it done on like a Friday or possibly Thursday then eh, you might be here till Monday I'm gonna walk in here because it is cold out here and then you do uh, get here uh, whatever your driver ID number is um, plus I think like the last two years socials you punch it on this key thing to get in after hours or on the weekends so about to go in here Oop, messed up. You gotta press the pound first. All right, so I'm in here right now. This is their uh, business center. It's inside the break room for people that's been here or people that's thinking about coming over here. But I wanted to do something on the computer real quick. And uh, when you typically try to get on the computer right here, you usually got a Landstar thing open. Here's a quick review. You can't see it. They got like four or five computers in here. Absolutely no food or drinks. <laughs> but let me get on here and talk a little bit. I'm on here, I'm trying to do something for my YouTube channel. I'm trying to get into it and I can't do it on my phone because it's a phone. You know, back then when you first had a cell phone or whatever the case is, you was able to like type you know, web addresses in your phone and it'll bring up like the entire like desktop version of it. Now with all these apps and everything crazy, you know, it just can't do it no more. I even try to do it on my PlayStation. <clears throat> um, I don't have a laptop, but that's because I'm trying to save up and get me a, um, a high tech tablet that can do everything that's pretty much a uh, Microsoft based. So once I get that, then it'll be a lot easier much easier to do stuff what's this oh wow i didn't know uh landstar blocked certain things check this out so i'm on my youtube right now i'm looking at my subscriptions here's a couple guys i follow shout out to bubba lobby um let's well, talk about the truckers this guy this guy is funny like i really be watching it like i even streamed some of his videos see how long you go like four hours and five minutes like man I can't talk that long. I mean, ain't enough stuff for me to talk about. Nick and Carla, you know. Uh, shout out to them. Shout out to Keep It 100 Experiences. I've been following her for a minute. I think my first YouTube channel and hers came up around the same time. But man, she done got popular. Popular. More power to her. And uh, I'm be trying Trucker AK. I see he just came over here not too long ago. So that's what's up. Uh, shout out to Coco's Journey. Like our videos, women in the trucking business trying to do big things. Well, not trying to, but are doing big things, you know. So, just a couple people I follow, you know. Keep up on them, so shout out to y'all. But I was trying to go into, like, YouTube studio and stuff. And I never knew that Landstar blocks certain places. So, that's different. Real different. So, I don't know, but anywho, uh, I do something, I do another thing I'm supposed to do here. All right, so let me talk a little bit why I'm nervous about becoming an owner operator 
or my concerns. It's really because I've been one before. And for those who just now seeing me on YouTube, and this is the first video they're watching, I've been an owner operator before and failed, but I didn't give up there. I just kept the motivation going and it's hard doing it, starting all over again. And you know, it's a hit on the credit, hit on your pockets. You're back down to making, you know, company driver money or lease purchase money if you do that route or 1099 money, which is the best route in my opinion. And you just gotta save up, you gotta stack. But it's hard, especially if you acquired uh, financial more financial obligations when you were an owner operator or you know making anywhere more than two thousand a week. So definitely, definitely um, a rebuild from that point. So there's a lot of things to consider, you know, before coming to an owner operator, and it's more than just saving up money, financing, whatever route you choose, you know, everybody's different. But after you acquired a truck, then the big thing is, what are you gonna do with the truck? Y'all already know what I'm gonna do with my truck. What is the big thing you're gonna do with your truck? What company, I mean, here is simple. The important thing is, whatever you decide to do with your truck or even if you get your own authority, at least know how it works, whatever you're gonna do beforehand, before you do it. And I know getting your own authority ain't gonna know how that works beforehand if it's your first truck. It's completely taking the biggest risk, but they say the better, the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. Uh, the reward. Sorry if I'm summing my words a little bit. Okay, so the truck has got, y'all seen that, the truck has got, I know the next couple steps is common sense, Bobtail insurance, where you're putting the truck on that, which I know that. Passing a DOT inspection, which that can concern a few people. But let's rewind back a little bit. You might want to take it to a maintenance shop or to a mechanic to kind of go over the truck to see what it may need or if everything's okay to move forward with your original plan getting it inspected and then putting it on to a company because the first time I got a truck, I got it from a dealer, from Freightliner. They told me that it passed the Texas DOT inspection, public safety or whatever. So since my truck payment and insurance was factored in together, I had insurance leaving off the lot, driving it to who I leased on to at that point in time. I had to also tell the dealership, give them get some kind of a promissory letter from the company I was leasing on to as a part of me getting the truck. So when I got to that company, the first thing I had to do was get it inspected. When I got it inspected, it failed for a couple of reasons, nothing serious. One of them is it needed a bellows or flex pipe. It was leaking, had an exhaust leak. That ran about $1,300 to replace. The second thing, oh, well, let me go back to the first thing. I didn't know that I couldn't see it while climbing underneath the truck that you didn't see it. They neglected to mention that at the dealership, but you know, a lot of us go to the dealership to get a truck under the faith or ignorance, whatever you want to call it, that nothing is wrong with it. You can just buy a truck at a dealership put on with a company and then start making all kinds of money. No, that's not always the case. It goes deeper than that. I did look over the truck, but I didn't go through it with a fine comb and that was a lot of the mistakes first time buyers will make because they'll be so excited that they got approved, you know, credit, that they have a down payment ready and that they can get the truck that they either really want or just happy to the fact that they can even get one at all. So you typically look over or overlook some of them things after you sign the paperwork, because I did. And a DOT inspection on a simple pre-trip, one of the things is the mud flaps have to have reflective tape on it. This truck did not, 
but the dealer said it passed the DLT inspection. I could have passed the DLT inspection, but it had no reflective tape on the mud flaps. One of the smallest, simplest things I overlooked so quick just because I was so excited to get a truck. And I did it impulsively too. I didn't even think I can get one. I just like, worst thing you can say is no. So I failed that, but I got the reflective tape. I got the bellows type replaced. And I was good, simple. So this time, same thing. Now it's Landstar. I know nothing's wrong with it because it was DLT inspected before I bought it. And I know it was. Everything is good on that truck. There's nothing wrong with it that the eyeball can see that needs immediate attention. It would have to be something either related to the after treatment system or maybe something out of adjustment at best. It's not gonna fall apart as soon as the hookup to a low and go down the highway. But the after treatment stuff, I'm gonna do something about that. Um, whether I get something called like a, oh, this is a thing that's called an OTR tool. You can plug it in, you can clear codes, do a force region and keep you going down the highway, something like that, you know. But other than that, once you get on, my fears start kicking in. My fears start kicking in. When is that emission light gonna come on? Cause I know that was like a problem with my last truck. It wasn't that bad. But when it came on, it came on. And I just like, you could be having the best day going down the highway, got a good load, making money, and then boom, that light can pop up at 1 a.m. while you're driving to get somewhere in your tire. You'd be like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with this truck? I don't need that the first, let's say, 90 days of me running here because I need a chance to make my money back. And I know I'm making back very fast here, very fast. So that's a big major concern. That is the biggest concern without, you know, running around the bushes, as they say. It's the first week, the first load that I do is going to be the most critical load starting out with my own truck for a second time. If something were to happen the first week or the first load, more importantly, it's gonna be rough and tough. It's gonna be rough and tough because wherever it happens at makes a big difference. If it happens in the area I'm comfortable with, then it's not as bad. That'd be like the best case scenario, but it'll come down to something like a sensor or I seen another YouTube over here, one of them I shouted out, had a blown tire their first week, a blown drive tire. Anything can happen, anything can happen. And you just gotta be prepared for it. You know, a lot of people go to a dealership, like I once said, and they'll think nothing will happen with that truck, like for a year or maybe two years or however long, just because they got from a dealership, like, you know, you buy a Kenworth from a Kenworth dealership or a Peterbilt from a Peterbilt dealership, just because you got it from a dealership, you think that everything's on it is a-okay, it's new, or it got the regular OEM parts on it, quality, whatever you may think. I don't know, I'm just kind of naming random stuff. But the reality is you can buy a truck from a dealership and drive 100 miles down the road and something happens. And here you go, you just spent all your money to get the truck and it's your first load. I do not want that experience. That's like my most feared experience of why it's paid for. There's no truck note. That's another thing, they go to a the dealership, they got a truck note. They might have the first 45 days with no payment or 90 days, but you know, still break it down your first load and your truck you know they do for the first three months, that's still gonna eat up that time you could be stacking and getting and getting in position to start paying that like you need to, if you're supposed to, like your obligations to tell you or dictate you to. I don't have that, but I don't want to have to tow it somewhere, get some ridiculous mount to get it fixed and get it back going on my first load. That is my biggest fear. I can let me reiterate if I haven't done it already, but I know I have. Biggest fear, biggest fear. So it's a really big risk. I know as long as you're young, I'm young, you know, I'm 30 something. It's a big risk. 
And it's kind of like I'm between whether if I should just say screw it, jump in it, head down the highway or park it, you know, make a little bit of money, have some more in my pocket, then jump in it. It's a heads and tails decision. I mean, what would some of y'all folks do? Let me know, comment below. But I thought I'd just make a quick video to say that you gotta really think about it before coming to owner operator. You know, how much money you spend in, whether you buy cash, finance, whatever the case is. The only reason that I'm this nervous is because it's the second time and the first time failed. First time buyers wouldn't feel like this. You know, they'll be more gung ho about the whole situation and just do it and start making money or start having problems. It's one or the other, it's the luck of the draw. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. It was just some sharing my thoughts, you know, my fears or whatever the case is. I mean, I'm already on it. I'm doing it regardless. It's just that that's kind of been blowing in my head before, during, and even now after, you know, the truck purchase. So it's already done. I'm already good. Still making money either way. And, um, I just want to be have continued success, man. Make bigger moves. I want to be one of them cats where I have a fleet of trucks, nothing too big, but have something going on pretty well to where I got constant income coming in and I'm not counting my own pockets. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll holler back at y'all.